Good afternoon, learners. Welcome you all to this uh, session. The topic of uh, today's discussion, succession in communities. Now, uh, this particular uh, topic, it belongs to BBYCT 133, Plant Ecology and Taxonomy, Block 2, Unit 6. So, here what we are going to talk is, what are, this is actually a functional parameter of community study where we are going to discuss how a community is formed and what are the sequence of events that actually lead to a community formation. So this is basically a functional aspect of community study. So what is meant by succession? Now, ecosystem, as we all know, it is a very dynamic entity and a large number of events take place. like you find any forest formation. So you must be uh, wondering to know how a forest is being formed. That means initially it was not a forest. Initially it was a barren land. It was an open land. And thereafter, there were certain series of events that led to the forest formation. Or initially it was just a open area. But ultimately, through series of stages, there was the forest formation. So these events, these sequential events, which lead to a formation of a particular kind of community is termed as uh, succession. So the biotic communities present in an ecosystem undergo changes. The changes can be natural or changes can be anthropogenic, that is due to human intervention. And long-term changes caused by natural events such as volcanic eruption, landslides, floods, hurricanes and human intervention such as mining and deforestation. So these are some of the factors which lead to the changes in a community uh, structure or in a community formation. So all these changes, they altered the community structure to a significant extent and many new species invade the area. For instance, if there is an open land or a barren land, then you must uh, understand that there can be some species which comes first. I mean, because of their more aggressive nature, they come first, they settle there, they establish themselves, and then they change the habitat, and then it leads to the progressive events or progressive sequential events by which the different other communities come and finally uh, establish themselves. So that particular sequence of events, this is actually termed as succession. So occurrence of a relatively definite sequence of communities over a period of time in the same area, process of change in species structure and it is directional, non-seasonal change in composition of species, and it is an orderly process of community change. And this definition has been given by the renowned ecologist Odom. So what are the parameters of succession? So orderly process of community development that involves changes in species structure and community process, it is directional and predictable. Why it is directional? Because one community, it actually gives rise to another community. So it is kind of, it has a directionality and ultimately there will be one community which will be stable, which, will, which we call here as the climax community. So it will finally establish or it will finally uh, be stabilized with the surrounding environment and it will be able to survive for a, on a long-term basis. Results from modification of the physical environment by the community, that is succession is community controlled even though the physical environment determines the pattern or the rate of change. So there are actually two parameters which can, uh, which can affect the community structure or community development. One can be due to external factors and one can be due to the different uh, due to the different communities that are being developed because one community is affecting the development of the other community either positively or negatively so ultimately it culminates in a stabilized ecosystem in which maximum biomass and symbiotic function between organisms are maintained per unit of available energy flow so these are certain parameters of the succession studies now what happens during succession? That is, what are the events that occur during succession? There is an increase in structural complexity, increase in species diversity, increase in biomass and standing crop, decrease in net community production, 
increase in non-living matter, increase in complexity of food chain relationship, narrowing of ecological niche. I hope all of you know what is meant by uh, niche. That is the functional role that a particular organism plays in a ecosystem. Increase in energy use and nutrient conservation efficiency and increase in stability. So these are some of the, um, uh, some of the effects or some of the events which you can uh, come across during succession. Now, we categorize the succession into different types based on different parameters. Number one, primary and secondary succession. Primary succession means it starts from a primitive substratum. As I said that initially there was nothing. It was a bare rock or it was a sand. It was just, there was no vegetation at all. But ultimately, okay, some uh, plant community first comes and settles there, which we call as the pioneer or the primary colonizer and thereafter through different series of events they give rise to some other community. So that is primary succession. Secondary succession? Secondary succession means it starts from a built up substratum. That is initially there was already a particular community but due to some natural calamity or due to some external force somehow the community got disappeared or somehow the community got destroyed. Then what happens? Then the total area again becomes free from vegetation. But ultimately, a time will come again when it might lead to uh, development of a new community. So initially there was a community, but it finally dis it disappeared due to some reasons. And then again, it, it was being uh, occupied by a different community. So like for, for instance, deforestation or erosion or jhum cultivation. So these might lead to this disappearance of a land, but later on again they might be occupied by a new kind of vegetation. So this is secondary succession. Next, based on the cause of succession, we also divide succession into autogenic and allogenic suc succession. Autogenic means after the succession has begun, the community as a result of interaction with the environment modifies its own environment. That means the community which has developed it actually changes the structure of the land or the structure of the habitat, okay? And therefore, what happens? That particular community is being replaced by another community. So the community itself is responsible for getting uh, itself replaced by a new community. So this is autogenic succession. Allogenic succession, that is here, some external conditions, as I said, some external forces, natural forces, they are responsible for the replacement of the existing community. So this is not occurring due to the community itself, but it is occurring due to some external factors. Autotrophic succession and heterotrophic succession. Autotrophic succession means that early and continued dominance of autotrophic organisms. Okay, so we all know that the plants are actually the autotrophs. So they begin in an inorganic environment and energy flow is maintained. What is heterotrophic succession? That means which starts with a heterotroph, that is bacteria, actinomycetes, fungi, animals. So these are all heterotrophic organisms. So they begin in an organic environment and then there is a progressive decline in the energy content. So initially there was a high energy content, but finally a stage will come that when the, there is nil energy or minimum energy. So substratum, instead of becoming complex, it becomes depleted. So in case of heterotrophic succession, okay, it is ultimately leading to energy loss. Progressive succession and retrogressive succession. Mostly uh, we, are, we come across progressive succession. That is, there is a simple community with few species, but ultimately it develops into a very complex community because there are different other, uh, you know, different kinds of community association occurs. Other kinds of communities also come and they uh, establish themselves. So that is progressive succession. Retrogressive succession, because of the biotic influences, they might have a degenerating effect on the process. That is due to destructive effect of organisms, development of disturbed communities does not occur and succession, instead of becoming progressive, becomes retrogressive. Like a forest, initially it was a forest, but somehow it changes to a shrubby land or the grassland community. Like for instance, I give you an example, like savanna biome. Initially, the savanna, it was initially thought to be a forested area. But since the savanna, it catches fires. There is, it's called a fiery biome. 
So there is often an incidence of fire attacks. So what will happen? The forests and all, these will get destroyed and it will be converted into an open land or a grassland. So we call, you, you can consider it as a retrogressive succession. Deflected succession, due to changes in local condition as soil or microclimate, succession gets deviated in a different direction than that presumed under climatic condition of the area. So the climax are likely to be different from the presumed climatic climax. I told you what is meant by climax. Climax means the final stabilized community. Now, sometimes you have an expectation that what could be the final stabilized climax or final stabilized community, but sometimes you find that there is a deviation. You are expecting some climax community. You are Maybe you are expecting like, for, for example, I give you an example, like you are expecting that there would be an oak forest or a birch forest, okay, which will ultimately reach its predominance. But somehow, you don't find it actually because there are so many other factors, microclimatic condition, biotic factors, anthropogenic factors, and you are not getting the expected uh, climax. So in that case, you can call it a deflected succession. Seasonal succession in India, where we have a monsoon type of climate, in some habitats like temporary ponds, it is common to observe each year the development of different communities in different seasons of the year. But this, is, this should not be considered as a succession. Such changes are recurrent and they are not developmental and therefore they should not be regarded as a succession. So seasonal kind of uh, changes in the, uh, in, the, in the community should not be regarded as a succession. So these are some of the uh, changes in the characteristics of plant at early and late stage of succession. So you can find what happens during early stage of succession and late stage of succession. So there are a lot of differences, like biomass. Initially it is small, later it becomes high. Height, plant height, initially short, ultimately long. Plant morphology, initially it's simple, complex. Seed longevity, that is long, short. Species type, R species, R selected species and K selected species. I am coming to this in the uh, later slides, what is what are meant by art selected and case selected species. Plant species diversity, low and high. Species stability, low and high. Net primary productivity, early stage it is high, but later stages it is low. Plant canopy structure, initially it is multi-layer, but later stage it becomes monolayer. So these are some of the differences uh, uh, between the early stage of succession and late stage of suc succession. Now, what are the steps? This is a very important uh, topic uh, and often you might be asked questions on this, basically descriptive questions on this, that is general process of autotrophic succession. What are the steps? Number one is nudation. What is meant by nudation? Nudation means it's a bare area. That means there is nothing, no vegetation. How it has been formed? Through landslides, through erosion or different other catastrophic agent, natural catastrophic agent or it can be topographic, that is, it can be due to soil erosion, it can be due to climatic factor like glacier, fire, frost, it can be due to biotic influence like anthropogenic activities, that is destruction of forest, grassland, etc. But you have to understand that in this bare area or in this open area, there will be one community or there will be one species which is very aggressive, and which is very hostile kind of okay, uh, species, which is able to dominate other species and which is able to survive under these harsh env environmental conditions. So these species are called R-selected species. So these R-selected species are very much fast growing and they are well dispersed, they thrive well and they finally settle in this particular region. Somehow they succeed in uh, getting themselves established in this kind of hostile situation. So these are our selected species and uh, this marks the first step of succession formation that is nudation. And we will, we will call these our selected species as the pioneer species because they are the pioneer community. Second stage will be the invasion that is when a species, it reaches a new area, it follows the following stages, that is migration. Now, you must be wondering how this new species is being, in, is invading the particular new area, that is through migration, that is it can be through seeds, it can be through spores, 
or it can be through any other vegetative propagules which will be dispersed through wind, water, air or whatever and it will finally come and settle in the new area. So, that is migration. After migration, ekesis. This is an ecological term which means establishment, establishment of the species that is the spores or the seeds they come or any kind of reproductive units they come and finally they settle and they establish themselves. They germinate and thereafter they give rise to new plants and ultimately those plants will actually uh, settle with the new environment and that process of establishment in the new environment or in a hostile environment we call it ekesis. Next, we have aggregation. Now, this species, new species which has settled itself or established itself, it will now reproduce, it will grow in number, it will get increased in number and they come in close proximity to each other and ultimately what will happen? More and more number of species which they will enter into the community and these species will be called as the K-selected species. So, the R-selected species have already created a congenial environment, okay, after getting themselves established and then they will invite newer communities which will come and settle in the same area and these newer species are known as the K-selected species. Next step is the competition and coaction. Now, by this time, the number of species, they have increased. So, if the number of species have increased, then there should be a competition and this competition can be intraspecific or interspecific competition that is within the same species competition or it can be within the diff between the di or among the different species. So, ultimately there is a competition, competition for space, competition for nutrients, competition for resources and so there is again a question of who will survive. So, ultimately the, the species which are more kind of aggressive or having a greater vigor, they will ultimately survive and they will outnumber the other species. Next, we have the invasion that is species from other areas they invade. I give you an example like Parthenium. So, it is an actually an exotic species, but somehow it is so aggressive that it has come from some other country and then they have uh, kind of uh, settled in the new area and what will they do? They will actually try to remove the existing species and they try to establish themselves. Water hyacinth, this is also another example. It is an exotic species, but it is very aggressive because in the rainy season you will find most of the ponds, uh, they are they get filled up with water hyacinth. Okay, so, uh, they, they have that power of reproducing themselves in enormous numbers. So, this is termed as the invasion. Then you have the reaction. Reaction means it is a most important stage that is mechanism of modification of the environment through the influence of living organisms on it. So, the new plants invade the area, they affect growth and survival of the earlier existing ones. So, if that occurs, then there is a modification in the environment and ultimately that environment becomes unsuitable for the existing community and it invites some newer communities which come and finally settle. And this will go on and on till we reach the last stage that is stabilization. That means ultimately there will be one community which we call as the final terminal community or as I already mentioned in the beginning that is climax community which will get stabilized for a longer period of time and it can maintain itself in equilibrium with the climate of the particular area. So, it has certain advantageous features by which it can actually uh, get itself accustomed with the surrounding environment with the climatic condition. So, the climax community is the final steady stage in succession and it gets stabilized in a particular area with the passage of time. So, you see that there are so many steps in the succession that is the whole process starting from the beginning that is pioneer community till the formation of the climax community. There are so many intermediate steps and this whole uh, process or the sequential event we also term it as CD, S E R E. So, this is another ecological term which we give in context to the succession formation. So, I hope I could make you clear what are the general process of succession. 
Now, there are certain examples. If you go through your uh, block or unit, you will find that uh, they have given certain uh, examples of succession, like oak forest. Like here, uh, this, uh, the uh, Dwight Billings in 1930 studied the succession of plant species uh, in the agricultural fields in North Carolina. Since the area was under cultivation, there was proper soil available. So initially it was well, uh, I mean, there was a particular kind of congenial environment. And so the community formation that occurred with regard to oak forest formation, we call it as a secondary succession, not primary succession. The first stage in uh, succession included the invasion of the bare ground area by pioneer species. So by this time, I think it is clear to you that there will be a pioneer species. So the annual species, most of these pioneer species were annual species. They are having a short lifespan. So obviously they will get replaced and then the biennial plants or the grasses, they come in the succeeding years. After three to four years, the biennial and grass species, they give rise to certain perennial herbs and shrubs. So these live for quite a number of years. And then after five to 15 years, you will find that the area is colonized by certain softwood tree species, particularly pine, loblolly pine, short-leaf pine, Virginia pine, and so on. As the softwood increased in number and grew in height, they form a forest canopy. So canopy means whenever there is a canopy formation, there is a shade. That is, it will offer shade. And therefore, the understory condition or understory, that means which are below, I mean, which are near the ground, they will get excluded. Why? Because they are not getting adequate sunlight. It is offering shade. So they are not getting adequate sunlight. So those kind of species, mostly the herb and shrub species, their existence becomes or they come to at stake. So perennial herb and shrub species, they gradually perish because there is an enormous shade. The canopy also changes the microclimate of the habitat near ground level. It was now more humid had moderate temperature and less wind. So this condition allowed the germination of hardwood species. So initially we had softwood species. Now we have hardwood species like oak and various species of hickory. Now 50 to 75 years down the line, what you have, the initial colonized, colonization of the pioneer species, the hardwood, started to replace the softwood species in the developing forest. So it takes around 50 to 75 years. At this stage in succession, pines had maximum height of 25 meters, oaks and hickories 10 meters. Because of their shorter lifespan, many of the softwood species died. So you can just see how from the uh, herbs and shrubs and then the softwood and then hardwood, how we are actually progressing through the series of stages. So that is actually the story that led to the uh, oak forest formation or oak community formation. Similarly, there are several other examples like growth of hardwood trees, including ash, poplar, and oak within the red pine planting area. So here also the hardwood tree growth was the increased shedding and subsequent mortality of the sun-loving red pines. That means which prefer sunlight, those species, they gradually dwindle or they gradually perish. The shaded forest floor condition generated by the pines prohib prohibited the growth of sun-loving pine seedlings and allowed the growth of the hardwoods. Raspberry thickets growing in the sunlit forest sections beneath the gaps in the canopy generated by wind-thrown trees. Like the raspberry plants, they require sunlight but beneath the dense shade canopy, particularly of the red pine, as well as beneath the dense stands of oaks, there was not sufficient sunlight for the survival of raspberry. So it could not survive because there was a lot of, there was not sufficient sunlight. The macro ecosystem change within the red pine stand and all along the more open sections of the trail has been noted. Within this raspberry thickets, dense growth of hardwood seedlings were found the raspberry plants generated a protected nursery for the seedlings and also protected tree seedlings from being destroyed. Other examples like a forest renews after logging, like sometimes it happens that the loggers, they chop out a large number of trees. 
So this creates actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, again an open land and that invites secondary succession because with time the trees will grow in the area and will return to the previous state. So initially there was vegetation but due to the chopping of the trees there was, a, uh, there was some kind of shortage in the community but again that gets replenished. Then volcanic eruption, that, that means like let, let's say there is a eruption of the molten lava. So it is creating destruction in the uh, vegetation. But again time will come when it will, be, it will be replenished. In the islands of Lawahi, several centuries ago fire erupted that caused destruction of all plants and vegetation. But again the beauty of the nature is that many years later you will find that the plants and the vegetation they come back or they return back to the original state. Similarly, if there is a pathogen infection, if there is a disease, okay, then as a, as a result the plants do not survive. But again when the pathogen incidence is gone or the disease incidence is gone, then again you will find the replenishment of the community. Similarly, with the case of the forest fire because fire may damage the uh, ecosystem as a whole, it may destroy the vegetation. But again, there can be certain plant parts like seeds, roots or different other perinating buds which might be buried within the soil and when the fire incidence is gone, then this will again germinate or this will again sprout okay, into new, uh, uh, new plants and ultimately it will turn into a community. In fact, there are certain buds which can actually, uh, which can actually survive forest uh, uh, which can actually survive fire attacks. I mean, uh, when th whenever there is an incidence of fire, uh, uh, these kind of birds, they remain in the dormant condition and when the incidence of the fire is gone, then uh, they, might, they might germinate or they might sprout into a uh, new kind of vegetation. So these are all the examples of, uh, you can say, secondary succession. Another interesting example, like you find in case of sugarcane, like what happens in case of sugarcane, when the sugarcane crop is harvested, the shoot is cut just above the soil. So the basal part still remains, basal part of the stem still remains in the field. So obviously there is a chance that from the uh, basal part new shoots will arise from the axillary buds and it will give rise to the ratoon crop which we, uh, which we call it as a ratoon crop. So this will mature faster allowing earlier har harvest of the crop for commercial gains. So after a few years, the yield gets reduced and the field is cleared of all the existing plants, but the new plants are introduced for a better yield. So this will go on for certain generations, okay, for a uh, uh, certain year, number of years and then you introduce the crop again in the field. So renewal of a crop after harvesting. So th all these are different examples of succession. Most of them are examples of secondary succession. Now, with regard to the succession event, uh, certain models have been proposed. In fact, there are three models which have been proposed with regard to the succession. Now, Joseph Connell and Ralph Slatier, the American naturalists, they propose three models with regard to the succession process. Number one, the facilitation succession. What does it mean? That changes in the abiotic environment are imposed by the developing plant community. That means the later or uh, the, the, the growth of the later species, they actually depend on the earlier species preparing the ground. Because I already told that initially the pioneer species come and then the pioneer species they settle. So uh, what they do is they alter the uh, structure of the land or they alter the microclimatic condition and thereafter they invite the newer species. So how the newer species they come and settle? Because the pioneer species they are actually changing the microclimatic condition or they are changing the soil condition or they are changing the habitat condition and that is why the next species they come one after the other. So this is a facilitation succession that means the pioneer species or the species which is preceding the next species it is facilitating the survival or the uh, arrival of the next species. So this is called facilitation succession. Next is tolerance model. Tolerance model suggests that a predictable sequence is produced because different species have different strategies for exploiting resources. Now the resource is limited but species A and species B 
they will not have the same potentiality of utilizing the resource. Okay, one species may outcompete the other species in the exploiting of the resources. Resources means in case of plant community, resources are mostly the soil nutrients, water, minerals, sunlight. Okay, so these are the resources for the plant. So for these resources, there is a competition. So the later species are able to tolerate lower resource levels due to competition and can grow to maturity in the presence of early species eventually outcompeting them. So what does the tolerance model says? Tolerance model says that the later species, okay, they are at an advantageous position because already the earlier species, they have created a favorable environment. So they are at an advantageous position and even they are able to tolerate the lower resource levels and therefore they can gradually outnumber or outcompete the earlier species. So this is called tolerance model. Inhibition model you can say it's somewhat uh, reverse of the earlier tolerance model. Inhibition model what does it say? Inhibition model is applied when all species resist invasion of the competitors. Later species gradually accumulate by replacing early individuals when they die. An important distinction between models is the cause of death of the early colonists. Now in case of facilitation and tolerance, this kind of model, what they suggest? They are killed in the competition for resources, notably light and nutrients. But in the case of inhibition model, early species are killed by local disturbances caused by extreme physical conditions or the action of the predators. So the facilitation model and the tolerance model, they are quite similar in nature, whereas the inhibition model, there is a slight bit of difference because in, in inhibition model, the emphasis is also on the physical conditions or the predator action. Not only it, it describes the competition among the uh, different species of the community, but it also takes into consideration other factors like physical factors or the predator action. Now we come to the types of succession. So we have, so long we have discussed about the uh, uh, different general processes of succession, what are the different kinds of succession, what are, we have represented uh, the community formation with certain examples like oak forest, raspberry forest, okay, or even what happens in case of uh, fire attack or pathogen infection or let's say in case of sugarcane. So we have taken certain case studies. Now we will go into the types of succession that is uh, we will mostly discuss on two different kinds of CD. I told you what is meant by CD. That is the whole sequence of communities that replaces one another in a given area. I told you that it is act actually directional in nature. That means first one species will come. Then let's say A, then B, then C, D. So it has a directionality and ultimately there will be a species at the end which will be the final community and as we told it's a climax community. So this whole sequence of community formation that replaces one another, okay, this we call as the CD and it can be actually categorized into different, uh, uh, different classes or categories based on the nature of the habitat like hydrocity or the hydrarch. That is from the name it is very clear when the sequence of event is occurring in an aquatic body, like for instance in a pond. Okay, in a pond you can find that initially there is one community, then another community comes, that, re that gets replaced by another community and ultimately there can be a situation when the pond gets converted into like a forest or a tree community. Initially there was plankton, like I will just uh, explain within a short, uh, after a short while, uh, how this hydrocity chain of events occurred in a hydrocity. Then zero city, that is succession on a dry bare land. So initially it was a rock surface, there was no vegetation. But ultimately you see over a span of time that rock surface is being uh, occupied by vegetation. So how is it occurring? 
that initially it was an it was just a rock surface there was no vegetation but ultimately it is converted into let's say a uh, uh, shrubland or a, a tree community how is it occurring so that is zero siri samo siri that is succession on sand with pioneers like spinifex ipomia biloba litho siri that is again on bare rock surface halo siri that is on saline soil there can be certain pioneer community like certain succulent species which come eocd or geocd that is development of vegetation in any area in any particular area it's a very general term senile that is succession of microorganisms and lower plants on dead plant parts so these are different categories of course we will be discussing in detail on hydrocd and xerocd so hydrarch is further divided into hydrocd and halocd mesarch means that is where adequate moisture conditions are present xerarch means succession in dry areas where moisture present in minimal quantity like dry desert or rocks and it can be further divided into lithocd or samocd so in this context you come across two terms one is it can be hydrocd or it can be hydrarch which is given in your uh, block also or it can be like zero cd or zerarc so you just go through the definitions now we come to as i told you we will take two representative examples that is hydro cd and zero cd so we will see what are the intermediate stages in the hydro cd now for hydro cd stages initially there is a phytoplankton i hope all of you know what is meant by a plankton plankton means free floating okay so initially like let's say there was a pond and you have the phytoplankton species which consists mostly of algae they begin to multiply and these are all the pioneer species so phytoplankton are the pioneer species now a time will come when there is the death of these phytoplanktons and other animals which are dependent upon phytoplanktons then what will happen who will come next bacteria fungi why because they are responsible for the decomposition of organic matter they will act upon these planktons they will decompose these planktons and naturally if there is a decomposition there will be enormous addition of the organic material the enrichment of water bodies with minerals creates condition supporting growth of other plant forms so since there is an accumulation of organic material now the different other communities will come gradually like blue green algae green algae diatoms bacteria they will colonize the primitive medium of the pond so initially it was dominated only by the phytoplankton but now the algal species diatoms they come and actually settle in this particular stage so naturally we will come across the next stage that is rooted submerged stage when the blue green algae has finally dominated again a time will come when there will be death and decomposition of the phytoplanktons because there will be further addition of organic matter and there will be accumulation of soft mud at the pond bottom so the pond will become shallower there the depth of the pond will reduce and then it will be it will invite some new species rooted submerged hydrophytes like hydrilla potamogeton myriophyllum nagus etc so these kind of species they finally come next stage is the rooted floating stage again there will be death and decay of the rooted submerged hydrophytes a time will come when there will be death and decay so again it will add more and more uh, soil or it will add more and more organic matter and there will be the water depth will be 2 to 5 feet now who will come the rooted hydrophytes with large and broad leaves floating on the water surface so initially it was rooted submerged species now there will be rooted species but which are having free floating leaves nelambo nymphia that means like if you have seen the lotus okay lotus leaves or free floating like pistia lemna wulfia so this kind of species either having uh, floating leaves or which are free floating 
they will come and settle in the next stage that is rooted floating stage. Next you have the reed swam stage. So ultimately the previous stage that is rooted floating stage, the species which, are, which were there, they will again die and there will be death and decomposition. And therefore the next stage, the species which will come, those are amphibious stage since the plants are rooted but most of their shoots they are emergent that is they are exposed to air. So semi submerged with emergent leaves. In the earlier case you had free floating leaves that means they were in contact with water but here in this case you have the emergent leaves which are above the water surface. For example typha, phragmites, scirpus. So this stage is initiated in extremely shallow water because you must be understanding that by this time the water has become tremendously shallow because there is more and more decomposition of organic matter and the death, uh, dead and decomposed plant materials of the earlier stages. So their rhizomes are profusely branched, the plants are rooted in the bottom of the lake. These plants obstruct light for submerged and floating plants which consequently die. In addition, there are some other groups of plants like Sagittaria, Alisma, which are called the emergents and they occupy the area. So th that is the characteristics of the reed swam stage. Next we come to the marsh meadow stage. Now gradually who comes? The grass family members, Graminae, Cyperaceae, because these are uh, the earlier monocots, monocot species, Carex, Cypress, Eleocaris, they colonize the area. Ultimately tall grasses, Ereophorum, Symbopogon, these kind of tall grasses and they form a mat like vegetation, like they form a carpet. So initially now you, you will not be able to identify that initially it was actually a pond because it is gradually becoming terrestrial in nature, terrestrial kind of habitat. And the plants are having rhizomatous uh, system. So now there are dominant plant species, mostly the herbaceous species like mentha, gallium, okay, so these kind of species. As a result of high rate of transpiration, there is a rapid loss of water and the mud is exposed to air. Next stage would be the woodland stage. And in case of woodland stage, you will mostly find the shrubs. So initially the previous stage was herbaceous, dominated by the herbaceous community. But again, there is a date, on, date and decomposition of the herbaceous community. And now you have the different kinds of shrubs, salix, corners, some of the examples. So they are offering a lot of shade, shade offering plants. So the grasses and sedges, which are understory, which mostly lie uh, along the ground surface, they will disappear and the shrubs, com shrub community will be more and more dominant. Finally, again, you reach a climax forest stage. That is the tropical rainforests in climates with heavy rainfall, whereas in temperate region, there are mixed forests like Acer, Quercus, etc. So you have the forest community because again, there is a death and decomposition of the shrubs and therefore, therefore there is more and more organic matter formation and therefore only those uh, community or only those uh, plant species which are very much taller in nature, which can utilize maximum amount of sunlight, they will actually grow and since they are offering shade, a lot of shade, so the understory vegetation which are being dominated by the herbs or shrubs, they are not able to survive. So ultimately, what started with an aquatic habitat ultimately ends in a terrestrial habitat. So this is known as hydrocere. So you start with a aquatic environment or aquatic habitat, ultimately it is converted into a forest community. Next example is the zero city. That is now initially it was a, I, I discussed with regard to the pond ecosystem or the uh, or, or the habitat was mostly aquatic habitat. Here, as I mentioned, what is meant by serocity? That is successional stages which is occurring on bare area. That means it is a very hostile kind of environment. There are no resources. There is no shortage of minerals or there is mostly shortage of water because in xerophytic situation, we all know that it is a dry habitat. There is no water, okay, like what happens in a desert. But in, even in a desert, you find that there can be a community formation. It's not that deserts 
they do not have any vegetation at all. They also do have vegetation. So the question is, how is this vegetational community formed in a desert? So for that, you will have to understand that again, there are certain intermediate stages. Or let's say you have a rock surface. So as I told you, how this rock surface will be finally converted into some, uh, or it will finally be converted into a vegetation enriched community area. So this will begin with the lichen stage. So all of you know what is meant by lichen. Lichen is actually a symbiotic association between an algae and a fungi. And in botany, you must have studied that lichens are of different kinds. That is the folios lichen, the crustose lichen, and the fruticose lichens. So in this case, the first community that comes and actually tries to settle or establish is the crustose lichen, like Chrysocarpus, Lacidia, Rhinodina. They come and, so these are the pioneer species, and they come and finally they uh, migrate to the rocks. And they secrete certain acids, organic acids, so that they bring about weathering and loosening of the soil particles. And so they add organic matter to the rock surface. So that invites the next stage, that is folios lichen stage, that is Parmelia dermatocarpon, which have leaf-like thalli. They are able to retain and absorb more water so that there is certain kind of uh, addition of moisture in the rock surface. And it builds the substratum and invites the next community, okay, that is the moss, moss stage, xerophytic mosses like Polytrica. Moss means mostly the bryophyte community that is Polytricum, Tortulia, Hypnum, Bryum, they come and settle. They compete with the lichens due to their growth and decomposition. And finally, they form an open community. They can bind soil particles. They can increase water holding capacity. So you see the soil is becoming more and more favorable. It is becoming more and more favorable for the uh, higher plant communities. Then you have the herbaceous stage. Because of the extensive growth of mosses, there accumulates more soil and more minerals. The mosses shed the lichens and competes with them. So there is a competition between the uh, moss and the lichens. Okay, And ultimately a stage will be reached when the mosses will also disappear and they will further add organic matter. And therefore the xerophytic grasses, they will come and try to settle in the new habitat like poa, eleusine, festuca, etc. Later in the next stage, you have the shrub stage, that is more accumulation of soil. The habitat becomes suitable for certain shrubs. Like if you have gone to a desert, you must have seen that there are certain species which dominate, like Zizyphus. This is a very uh, predominant species in case, of, uh, in case of a desert. So they overshadow the herbaceous vegetation because shrubs are taller, so they will offer shade, and therefore the herbaceous vegetation will try to disappear. So this kind of uh, pattern is the same like as you have seen in case of a hydrocity. And finally again, you will have a climax forest stage. So even in a desert, even in case of zero city, you can find a forest. But that is of course a forest which is dominated by the xerophytic species, xerophytic tree species, acacia, prosopis. So these, these are the tree species which can form a community in a desert. Of course, they have a different kind of property, okay? Xerophytes, they have a different property, which we are not going to discuss today, uh, the, what are the features of the uh, xerophytes. Further weathering of rocks and increasing humus content favor the arrival of more and more number of trees, and finally, the vegetation becomes mesophytic. So initially, it was dominated by the xerophytic community, but ultimately, the environment becomes so favorable that even the mesophytic species, that means the normal species, okay, which we find uh, all around us, they can also come, come and they can form a community. So ultimately, a desert city or a zero city gets converted into a normal city, that is a normal kind of habitat. So the plant community, okay, they are actually uh, affecting or they are altering the structure of the particular habitat. So in the last few minutes, we will be discussing on uh, the climax, okay? And we will be discussing two theories with regard to climax before we close this session. That is climax, as I told you, is the final terminal and stabilized community. That 
actually establish itself in the system or in the ecosystem and it is in equilibrium with the environmental conditions. So it is a mature, dominant, self-maintaining and slow changing community. Now with regard to the climax formation, there are two theories. One is called monoclimax theory and another is called polyclimax theory. Now monoclimax theory has been given by Clements, which states that climax is a unit and index of climate of the area. So if you study the climax, then you will get an indication of the surrounding climate. Climax community is more or less stable with the climate because it actually behaves according to the surrounding climatic conditions and it cannot be replaced through competition by any group of species. So in a particular kind of climate, the climax communities with only a few dominant species will be available. And uh, Clements has uh, given a concept called organismic concept of climax community where he suggests that climax community can be treated as an organism. That means it has birth, it grows, it develops and finally it becomes mature. So it can be designated as a super organism. Of course, this uh, concept that is monoclimax theory or the organismic concept of climax, it has certain uh, demerits. So as I told you, the Clements has given this idea and the criticisms against this monoclimax theory are there because the main criticism is that, see, a climate cannot be stable. We cannot uh, imagine a climatic condition to be stable because it keeps on fluctuating. What uh, the climatic condition you have today and the climatic condition you have maybe uh, after a few years, it might change. So accordingly, the climax community is also supposed to change because climate is not fixed. So how this particular definition of Clements could be accepted then? that the climax is a stabilized community which is dependent on climate but the climate as a whole is not stable because it keeps on fluctuating. So this is one of the severe criticisms that has been given against monoclimax theory. Moreover, in the same climate, climax communities can be different. Even in the same climatic condition, you have different climax communities. There, it doesn't mean that there can be only one climax. There can be three or four climax or n number of climax communities. All of them have established in that particular area. So uh, like for instance, in the same climate, a lithocity and hydrocity beginning with different pioneer communities may develop into similar climax communities. Similarly, it may not be true that succession with similar pioneer communities would always develop into similar climax. Therefore, the main problem with the monoclimax theory is that Clements has overemphasized climate as a parameter to explain the concept of climax. And therefore, people later suggested that you cannot regard or describe climax solely on the basis of climate as a parameter. So this has given rise or therefore a parallel view or a parallel concept has come which is called the polyclimax theory and this has been given by Tansley in 1935. What he suggested is there are possible control of other factors as well. So he introduced certain new terms like subclimax, city climax, disclimax, subclimax that is stage in succession just preceding climatic climax, city climax that is community which became stabilized and disclimax that is community which became stabilized due to recurrent disturbance by man or biotic factor. So in a nutshell what I mean to say is that you should not consider climate only as a factor, you should consider other factors also like soil factor, biotic factor that is due to different predators, anthropogenic activities, topographic climax, fire because we have already seen that fire is a very important ecological factor which affects the vegetation. So all these factors should be taken into consideration when you are explaining the climax community or the stable community. So learners, uh, finally if we sum up what we studied today. So initially we started with the definition of succession 
and then what are the different stages in su succession, the classification of succession, the parameters of succession and then uh, we took certain case studies like uh, in case of certain community formation, how can you explain this succession uh, parameter. Then we categorize the uh, uh, succession or the CD into different categories of which we highlighted on the hydro CD and the zero CD. And then finally we discussed climax community that although it is a steady stage in succession, uh, it depends on a different number of factors. It should, it, it, it should not be explained only on the basis of climate, but there are different other factors which should be taken into consideration in explaining the climax community. So I hope uh, I could make uh, this particular unit uh, lucid and simple and uh, uh, please go through this unit. Uh, it is a very important unit in ecology and uh, the functional dimension of community. And uh, in case you are facing any problem with this particular unit, please email us or please feel free to contact us and uh, with your queries or questions and uh, we will be there to help you. So thank you all and uh, please go through the units and have a very, very happy learning. Thank you.